Vaccination can work both at the individual protection level, but the emerging data, which has been really important, has shown that the vaccines are impacting on transmission. It comes back to what's the benefit? Why do we want to be protected from COVID-19? And this is really the, the, the way out or the passport out of this pandemic is to have as many of the population protected from SARS-CoV-2 or COVID-19. And to do that, we need to have a large proportion of the population vaccinated. But how about that 20 year old? How about that 25 year old who wants to go out and don't think they're gonna get sick from COVID and they're told to wear a mask and they've got to do online learning and they can't do the normal things. Well, they can get the infection. It's correct that they're less likely to get severe infection, but they may well transmit it both to their workplace and colleagues, may go into their parents to their grandparents who may have those severe outcomes. So the vaccines provide individual protection, but the emerging data, which has been really important, particularly out of the United Kingdom, which has looked at this very closely, has shown that the vaccines are impacting on transmission. So they're stopping you transmitting that to your colleagues and friends and therefore that circulation. So if we can make sure that we're protecting enough of the population, having that herd protection, which does vary the level required or the threshold required will vary depending on the infection. But if we can reach that threshold, we'll be able to stop transmission, which will be so important if we do have cases or outbreaks or these variants concern are emerging. If we have that high threshold, we can stop transmission and therefore protect those that are most vulnerable around them. So it's not just about the individual, it's about trying to protect the community more broadly and try and get this passport out of the pandemic for which vaccination is the only way out. Vaccine safety is a really important part of the immunisation program and it's been amazing how quickly we've come to have um, vaccines come to market around the world. So this has been one of the amazing things of the pandemic is that we, within less than a year, we had identification of the virus and production of vaccines. Now we have multiple vaccines being used around the world. Vaccine safety is important in the early phases of the clinical trials, but it's much smaller numbers. And as we go to these bigger populations, we need to have robust vaccine safety systems to monitor for any adverse events following immunisation or AEFI for, for short. We've been doing this for years in Australia with a really robust um, system. So that's included in the infant vaccine program. We give vaccines in pregnancy. We give vaccines in adolescence, as well as in the elderly. We've had these systems set up to monitor adverse uh, events following immunisation across the life course. But obviously now with COVID, trying to vaccinate the whole of the Australian population, uh, if we can in 2021, for the licensed vaccines at the moment over 16 years of age, it's really important to have these robust vaccine safety systems in place to monitor for adverse events following immunisation. An important part of vaccine safety communication is discussing the risk benefit. So what is the risk of an adverse event versus the benefit of the immunisation? And this comes at a few different levels. So when we look at immunisation or immunisation programs, they often come at a national or a global level. What's the level of protection that's required for herd immunity or protection from the infection more broadly versus an individual level discussion, which is really important. That autonomy of you being able to make a decision about having a vaccine and what's the risk benefit for you personally or for your person you're helping to make that decision, which may be you're an elderly family member in a residential aged care facility. Trying to balance out a rare adverse event versus the risk of COVID-19 is really important. Sometimes that needs to be an individual discussion, but as healthcare workers, how can we protect ourselves and our patients from COVID-19? How can our family and friends and those around us or those that are more vulnerable that maybe can't get the vaccine for different reasons are protected from this infection? So the risk benefit will change depending on what's happening uh, with COVID-19, which may obviously change over winter. And we've seen what's happening in India and other countries globally with these variants of concern. We just really don't know what the pandemic will throw up. So that's part of it. We need to be prepared for any eventuality, but by getting our vaccination coverage to a much higher level, we'll be able to protect the community.